After a very disappointing loss this postseason at home as a 15-1 team to a division rival in the Dallas Cowboys, the Redskins go into their fourth off season. Today, we bring to you GG9 to bring us some scouting reports. So let's get into it. Take it away, GG9, and thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks, FG, and hello, Redskins fans. I know that you're all disappointed, as disappointed as I am, that the 15-1 Redskins fell to a divisional rival as the number one seed in the playoffs. How'd that freaking happen? I hated seeing them go, especially down at home to the Cowboys. Of all people, of all teams, the freaking Cowboys. But at least, at least the saving grace here is that they did lose to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Now, it's time to focus on the offseason and how the Redskins can retool and get back in that same position for next season so they can pretty much get over the hump and finally get to Super Bowl. I have 15 players who I think could, could, keyword could, possibly end up in Washington if certain things fall the right way come draft day. Let's begin, shall we? I would normally start with a quarterback, but from what I can tell, this class is really disappointing. Good thing the Skins have Tyler Morris, right? However, it's no secret that no running back was worth mentioning this season outside of Jeffrey Moore. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because Moore's amazing, but it's nice to have depth. There are two nice running backs in this class that I really like. The first is John Greer out of Georgia. He's five foot nine, 214 pounds, and is one of the shiftiest backs in the class. And for a guy that's gonna be that low center of gravity with that kind of punch to him, got some elusiveness and shiftiness, that's a really nice thing. It's just the kind of guy that Coach McCoy loves. He's got an elite spin move and really nice juke move. His vision is among the best in the entire running back class. He's projected to come off the board in the early second round, but I think he's a little more talented than that. I think what's underrating him is the fact that he's only had 947 yards this season rushing, but he only got 132 touches. Do I get it? With more on the roster, most of you wouldn't want to spend a day number two pick on a running back, and that's fine. But then there's another guy, and we'll have to consider Vincent Drayton out of Alabama. 5'11", 194 pound receiving back is not only an elite and elusive and has a killer juke move, but he also fumbles the least of any back in this class. He's very, very solid at carrying and toting the rock. Without fumbling this season, he's amassed 1,439 total yards and 16 touchdowns. It's criminal that a guy this good and from such an elite running back school is only projected to come off the board in the late fourth round. In the late fourth round, this guy's a legit first round player. Maybe he slips maybe to the second. Maybe we can pick him up right then and there. Moving on to the wide receiver position group. This is a group that the Redskins could look to overhaul, especially on their roster right now. John Ross has not really looked so good this season and the Redskins haven't had a 1,000 yard receiver since <laughs> Pierre Garcon and Deshaun Jackson were on the team in 16. Luckily for the Redskins, there are two game changers at this position. Kirby Solomon from the Miami Hurricanes. He stands at 6'2", 207, and he's an elite route runner that makes some of the most spectacular catches in the entire country. A 1,000-yard receiver both of his starting seasons with a total of 25 touchdowns. This guy is legit, and with that kind of size, you would think that that's gonna translate over to the next level. The problem is, if the Redskins want to select him here, they might have to move up as this dude is definitely a top 10 pick. Another top 10 guy is a guy that I really like. It's near and dear to my heart. Go blue, Isaac Spicer out of Michigan. Michigan! We all know how I'm such a big Michigan guy, but this 6'2", 200 pound deep threat is a treat. He excels at route running, but is especially good when he's in traffic and making physical grabs, snatching the ball away from the would-be defender. This was his only starting season in college, but if 72 catches for 1,467 yards and eight scores is any indication that this guy is something special, I don't know what else would be. It's hard choosing between those two guys, but I won't let my bias show. That's all the weapons that I have to talk about on offense. What Washington had a lot of issues with this year's offensive line play, I think I can help there just a little bit. The tackle position is particularly strong this year. Left tackle
tackle Chester Hoffman out of Washington has the size. It's 6'7", 316, and he's a very good pass blocker with nice footwork, which is very, which is pretty rare, a guy that big. Really, 6'7", we're not talking length here, we're talking some meat on this guy as well. So the great thing is he's only projected in the late second round, so Redskins could easily take him right here. Moving over here to right tackle, there's really three underrated right tackles in this class, and we're gonna start off with Khalil Baden out of California. He's more of an agile right tackle, and despite his really good size at 6'6", 329, that how you're an agile right tackle, that's crazy to me, but he is, he is, and he looks like he's gonna be a pretty darn good one. And even though it fits the Redskins scheme, I'm just not sure that his more skilled in run blocking over his pass blocking makes him exactly what the Redskins are looking for at the right tackle position. Still, as a late fourth round projection, he's a steal in my mind. Redskins should consider him if he's available here. Next guy, Trey Knight, is another right tackle coming out of Duke. He's a definite power lineman at 6'6", 329. So you got both guys, Khalil, Baden, and Trey Knight as the same size and frame. And he comes with a little more balance with solid run blocking power and pass blocking footwork. Another late fourth round projection that could come off the board earlier if Coach McCoy gets his hands on him. The final lineman is right tackle Chris Meadows from Auburn. This guy's got a cool name. I don't know what it is. Khalil Baden seemed like he got that cool name, but Chris Meadows, something about him here, especially in that Auburn uniform. He's got another power lineman here for, as a right tackle, 6'7". On the other side, could you imagine, could you imagine if you selected Chester Hoffman and Chris Meadows on both sides? Just saying, you got two beasts on the opposite sides of your center. Amazing how all these linemen have great size from big schools, right? Meadows has fantastic impact and lead blocking skills, and he's only projected in the middle of the sixth round. So he's, he's, he's gettable, he's gettable. This guy is worth a much better selection than that as he had 47 pancakes. 47 pancakes, it's insane, it's insane. So come to Combine, he's probably gonna start jumping up and flying up those boards. So that is it for offense, guys. So we're gonna turn the page over here to defense. There are some players who could be leaving defensively and might be tough to get replaced with low cap room with this Redskins team. And when you got low cap, that's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. You got some hard decisions to make. So we'll start on the defensive line where two guys in particular catch my eye. First, left end, Richard Toon. What a great name. Richard Toon out of Northwestern. Toon is a late fourth round projection. He's six foot four, 289, and has a strong power rusher. Seems to be kind of in that mold of what Washington might be looking for. He wrecked the Big Ten by amassing 10 sacks. He's hard hitting, he's a quarterback's nightmare. Defensive tackle Dustin Bergstrom from the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame is another power rusher, six foot four, like Toon, but 10 pounds heavier at 299. He's even more of a freight train. Both guys are similar players playing different spots of the field, but Bergstrom made more of a mark with 13 sacks and his projection of a mid first round pick only proves that. Moving to the defensive backfield group, it's full. Great playmakers and steals in my opinion, and that could be a very good thing as Redskins are looking for those cheap little nifty little moves here in the back end of the draft. We don't know how much longer Washington can keep guys like Landon Collins and Vaughn Poole around, so it's best to start finding guys who could fill those holes with ease. Cornerback Craig Coffey out of Baylor is one of the smartest and most instinctful players in this entire draft. He's a terrific zone coverage guy with great play recognition and awareness. He always seems to know where the ball is going to be, and this is a great trait to have at the next level. Anticipation at that position is key. His elite smarts have earned him an illustrious college career as he will lead Baylor with the most interceptions and pass deflections in school history. I don't know if a mid first rounder can be underrated, but if any can, it's probably him. Let's go to the Tar Heel State in North Carolina as we see Deshaun Bonner. Played slot corner his entire career out there in that Carolina blue. The only reason is because he actually is the best slot corner in the country. He was just so dominant there that you never really wanted to move him. You never wanted to move him. He's aware and he can play equal man in zone coverage, so it's really hard to beat him with anything in particular. 
He actually had three sacks off blitzes and five picks this past season, making him a mid first round projection as well. So we're talking about two guys in the mid first round as cornerbacks, but it seems like safety is the position to go, right? Tulane free safety, Sherrod Miles. He's tall and lengthy at six foot three, 208. Very good at run support. He packs a wallop hitting ball carriers and his pursuit and wrap-up tackling is so tough to match up against. He had 77 tackles this season at Tulane, and honestly, I think some scouts might be looking at him and thinking, oh, he's from Tulane, so that's the reason why he's a mid-fifth round. Well, production don't lie, guys, and it seems like this guy might be a sneaky little addition. Our final two prospects are listed at strong safety. We got one guy named Sherrod Triplett. He's even taller than Miles, the guy we just talked about, at six foot four, 209. He's a zone safety with bone crushing hitting ability and even more smarts than people give him credit for. But you can see it on the screen, guys. So I'm, not, I'm not sure why, right? I mean, it's not like he went to Stanford. It's not like he's super smart. No, yeah, he's from Stanford. He's from Stanford, he's, he's, he's good. He's good up in the head. He's good mentally. He also forced seven fumbles this year if that means anything to you guys. Mid third round projection is a crime for this guy. I think he's more of a late round second. Next guy up, Joshua Price is our final prospect coming out of Ferris State. Ferris State, out in Michigan. Yeah, nice, nice. Good job, FG, scouting these guys. I, I like it, I like it, I like it. Throwing in Michigan guys in small schools, I like it. He stands at six foot. 196 pounds. He played this year at Ferris State due to being kicked off of LSU for assaulting the Tigers starting quarterback who, <laughs> get this, he slept with Price's girlfriend while the team was on the road. Yeah, yeah, the quarterback was nursing an injury and she was apparently nursing him too in more ways than one. You know what I mean? But long story short, long story short, Price was cut and he ended up at Ferris State where he just absolutely dominated. He had 92 tackles, four tackles for losses, three forced fumbles, one recovery, and nine interceptions. Nine! Nine interceptions! Nine! Like my namesake, GG9, my favorite number. Nine picks, that's a lot. He made better catches than most wide receivers can and he packs a punch hitting wise. He's projected an early fifth because of his past issues. But you know what? With the right coaching, and the right mentoring, and just understanding that the guy needed some things nursed on his own, you kind of give him a little bit of a break, right? This guy could be an absolute gem. So guys, those are the 15 players that I think the Washington Redskins should be looking at this offseason. Who are your favorites? Who should the Redskins take? Which guys are you really thinking that might be late round steals? Are you thinking about maybe somebody else? Is there somebody else on FG's draft board that you might be considering and contribute right here right now? This is a team that went 15 and 1, so it's not totally like, you know, they need a lot of help. Obviously, you want to keep this train a moving. So be sure to comment below and get a discussion going and don't miss the off-season live stream, which will be coming soon right here on YouTube. This has been GG9 with your season four scouting report. Thanks again, FG, for having me on and back to you. The pleasure was all mine, my good friend, and thank you for coming on. Everybody who has not already subscribed to GG9, a link to his channel will be in the description box below. Please make sure you go over there, show him some love, let him know where you came from, because he has a great series in the XBA going on. You definitely want to check that out, as well as other content on his channel, so you will not regret it. Make sure you do that. We are going into the off-season. We are going to have an off-season live stream tomorrow night around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take a look in the community tab and definitely set your notification bell so you know exactly when I go live tomorrow. If you're excited for this off-season, let me know who you think the Redskins should be targeting out of this bunch. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know. Don't forget to like this video, and I'll see you at the live stream. Pretty little star.